So the machine is going along and efficiency innovations, as we started to measure things in this way in the uh, early 80s in Rio, uh, efficiency innovations would create capital. And then the analyst had to make a choice. All right, so we got all of this capital. I wonder if we should use that capital to invest in disruptive innovations. But when I look at it, it actually doesn't make any sense because disruptive innovations pay off only in five or 10 years. And if we invest in those things, internal rate of return collapses. And you know, if we invest in disruptive innovations because they're growing, it takes capital and it's gonna put capital onto the balance sheet, not off. And so uh, Rona goes down. But you know guys, you know, another way to do it since those metrics almost put a barrier in investing in disruptive innovations, why don't we just invest in another round of efficiency innovations? Because efficiency innovations pay off in a year and they actually create capital, not use it. And so after we do this, we even have more capital that we can invest. So they have more capital and they look at this and say, oh, the problem is if we invest in disruptive innovation, internal rate of return collapses, RONA collapses. And on the other hand, if we invest more in another round of efficiency innovations, fast creates capital and so we have more how should we invest this darn it if we in dis have i t played this story before if we invest in the things that would create jobs and create real growth in our economy the measures of profitability decline because we cho we choose to measure profitability in these particular ways and holy cow, if we only invest in efficiency innovations by the way we measure things, we're more and more and more profitable. And so that's what's been happening in uh, the United States. Uh, in America, there is still a little bit of capital going into disruptive innovations, but we're generating only about a third of the disruptive innovations in the last 20 years that we were making in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. In Japan, it's much worse. Um, through the 1950s, 60s, and 70s in Japan, they were launching on the world disruption after disruption. So it wasn't just Toyota making uh, cars affordable, but Honda went into the motorcycle business and came in with these rusty little, really, uh, bicycles with a motor on them, we called them a cub. And they made it for s more so uh, safe and affordable that grandmothers could have mo motorcycles. And uh, Sony made po pocket radios and portable televisions that made it so affordable and accessible that many people who previously couldn't own a television now could. And so these companies in Japan made it affordable and accessible so that billions of people around the world could now own and use things. And as a consequence, if you remember, in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, Japan's economy was growing at unprecedented rates. Their, um, un the unemployment measures were less than 2% for about 30 years. And they were a model for everybody. But in the late 1980s, there were enough analysts in Japan that had been trained in the USA, that they began to use these measures of, in, of uh, measuring investments in Japan. And since 1990, Japan's economy has developed only one disruptive innovation. That's the Nintendo Wii. It's the only one. And as a consequence, Japan's economy has just been dead for 25 years. It creates no jobs. Um, the cost of capital is zero. And they are awash in capital. And yet they can't do anything as a result. The very same thing is happening in America. Has our uh, people with capital 
invest over and over again into disruptive, or I'm sorry, into efficiency innovations, our, our economy is just awash in capital. Um, the private equity shops, just as an example, have in their, balance, in, in their uh, bank accounts or in committed uh, funds about a trillion dollars in private equity shops. Just a trillion dollars. You ask those poor people, um, what do you do with a trillion dollars? And their response is, there just is so much money chasing too few deals. And you talk to uh, entrepreneurs, and they're, what they bemoan is that they can't get funding. And Coldridge wrote a piece, you might remember, uh, called The uh, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. And this uh, ag aged man goes out in the ocean and uh, looks around and he complains there is water, water everywhere and not a drop to drink. And that's really the situation that we're in. Um, Abu Dhabi has a f sovereign fund. They got a trillion dollars. What would you do with a trillion dollars? The, cap the, the cost of capital is zero. It is everywhere. The, the uh, chairman of the Federal Reserve in America, his name is Bernanke. He has a PhD in economics. And what is he doing with his life? Every year he goes to, every day he goes to the beach. And he stands there with a, hi, uh, a fire hose open full bore. And he's trying to fill up the ocean with capital. And I think the Bank of England is doing the same thing. And they're doing something that simply won't work because the world has changed in a dramatic way.